So, <laughs> I'm back, and um, it feels weird. It feels weird sitting here again and making making a video again and making videos again. Um, to those of you that watched my instant reaction to the Northampton game, thank you. Uh, the support has been has been very good, and I'm very greatly appreciated that. I was quite surprised to see people expressing their concerns as to where I'd gone. I can assure you I didn't didn't go anywhere. I just I've just been here and just lurking in the shadows, I suppose you could put it, or just sort of semi retired if you want to put it that way. As you can tell by the title, I'm here to explain why, and I think you can maybe guess why. Um I think if I'm giving sort of personal reasons as to why I think motivation was at an all-time low which you could probably imagine is understandable considering what's happening with the club right now and obviously that is the main reason um, as to why I just had to put things down other stuff you know just yeah the typical uni work excuse which I must have used a few times now coming into third year my closing stages of third year I graduate this year so a lot of my mind on that front. I also work in Formula One now, which takes up a, a lot of time and I'm really enjoying doing that at the moment. So there is that. That's been going on. But as I said, the main the main reason as to why I stopped and the main reason as to why the motivation just wasn't there was because of the football club that I support. And I can't remember it ever being this bad in the situation that Charlton find themselves in right now. The last time I uploaded, we won our we won our first league game away up from home at Wigan. And probably at that point in the season, you'd have to say maybe question marks were started to be asked about Appleton, but it very much so was still the early stages. We got results on the board early on. Obviously, we beat Reading 4-0. That stands out as a result of the season, really, and a performance of the season, how well we played that day. And obviously getting our first away win. That was the last time I uploaded match reaction to the Wigan game when we won 3-2. When we almost bottled a free goal lead. That is the only game we've won away from home all season. We haven't won away from home since then. We haven't kept a clean sheet since the, get the day we played Reading. In League One that is. That's 15 games without a clean sheet. It might even be more than that now, I don't know. We are 10 games without a win. If my mind actually stands me corrected, I think the, the the next win that we won after that Wigan game was against Cheltenham. And we barely beat Cheltenham as well. It took two Alfie May penalties to beat them. That was the next win that we had in the league. And that is the only win that we've had in the last 10 matches. 10 games without a win. Find ourselves 17th in League One. Four points above relegation and another manager sacked. How do we keep ending up in this position? In terms of managers, that is. But like I said, I've never, ever, ever seen it this bad at Charlton. It's unthinkable. It is absolutely unthinkable. The concept of us going down to League Two. And the, the worst thing about it is it is very much a reality. We could actually go down this season. We're one of the worst informed teams in the league. And you would have to you would have to have a look at our squad. And surely you'd have to say, with some of the players we've got on our books, how are we in this position? I don't know what's happening. How we keep getting this wrong. But I, I think I think this time in terms of managerial appointments, I think this one I think actually was the right decision in terms to sack him the other managerial appointments I mean you just look at Jackson look at Garner look at Holden people that were afford that were not afforded time Appleton was given too much time rather ironically only lasted four months he should never have managed the game last night against Northampton recording this on a Wednesday don't know when you're going to see this he should never have been in charge of that game he should have gone a long time ago he probably will go down as the probably one of the most unpopular managers in Charlton history. The one thing that Charlton fans actually agree on in the last, uh, God knows how long, is Appleton has to go. 
and he finally went after last night. And last night was just, it was a toxic atmosphere right from the get-go. I wasn't looking forward to last night, A, because I thought Northampton were going to pump us, and secondly, because of the toxic atmosphere. Now, I don't know what you think about this. I mean, obviously, I, I mean, I wanted Apple one out as, as much as the next fan. But I was not looking forward to the atmosphere because I just didn't think the players needed it. Nor do they deserve it. They deserve to be in a much better position in the hand that they've been dealt with. They don't need that. The team is so deflated, so lacking confidence. No guidance, no sense of direction. And they should be performing a lot better than where they are. Because we have got some, I would like to think, some pretty decent League One players on this book. Some players that realistically should probably take us to top 10 minimum but yeah I it's, it was just one of those one of those I mean I went there last night to support the team I didn't want to I, I didn't get involved in the Appleton chance until the very end of the game because at the very end of the game it was very clear that we didn't have the bottle to win the game or get the victory and the worst thing about it is even if we got the win Michael Appleton probably would still be in charge right now he probably would have been afforded more time that he didn't deserve I will never, ever, ever wish for Charlton to lose a game, but last night was probably the best thing that could have happened to us. It was the final nail in the coffin. It had to be done for Appleton. Obviously, a video circulating on social media of Charlie Meffin apparently doing his nut in the uh, in the um, boardroom. Allegedly, that was him telling Appleton to piss off and pack your bags and get out. But it was just it was just really frustrating last night. Just talking briefly on the game, like just silly defensive mistakes again. Like we literally one ball through the defence. I've seen the highlights back. I think, to be honest, I think he's onside. He's timed his run brilliantly, Simpson. Absolutely fantastically. Romani Edmonds-Green making his debut, tries to come back, and Simpson just skips past him, puts him on his arse, and smashes it into the back of the net. Defending is absolutely shocking. We They score an own goal. Freddie Ledapo completely missing a shot. The defender doesn't have enough time to react. Literally about two minutes later, they go down the other end. Once again, another poor defensive mistake. Another cutback. How many fucking goals of them have we conceded this season? Then we get a goal right on the stroke of half time. Tenai Watson of all players getting himself a goal. And in the second half, like it's just... the standard of football was so bad yesterday. Like Northampton, for a side that were one of the most informed teams in the league, they were there for the taking last night. I really didn't think they were all that in the second half. Then again, neither are we. We look shot to pieces. It, it was literally just a game of back and forth, back and forth. Like we'd come forward slowly, lethargically, trying to build something and then we try and put a ball into the box when no one was in the middle or we couldn't get through and couldn't have shots away. And Northampton would pump it clear and they'd try and run past our defence down the other end. They should have had a stone wall penalty, which was outrageous, by the way. Maynard Brewer getting caught absolutely off guard. He's come sliding out. He's taken the striker out completely and the ref booked him for simulation. It's a, it's a stone wall penalty. But and we got reduced to 10 men as well. Tyro Eden, I think that was harsh, to be honest. He was already on a yellow card. It's a 50-50 challenge. He gets to the ball first and it's the follow-through. He doesn't go in studs up or anything. I don't think it's a second yellow. I think it's very harsh and we can't even appeal it either because it weren't even a straight red. So Eden's out for well for the next game or however long he's suspended for. But it was exactly what we need right now, isn't it? Because we ain't got an alternative left wing back, that is. And then the typical thing happens. I knew straight away it was going to happen. I knew it straight away. You take off Watson, you bring on Tyrese Campbell playing right wing, a player that is so low on confidence in the attacking third, and he's not a defender. He cannot defend. What's the thought process with that? Players are absolutely shot to pieces. They're so tired. They're, lack of, they're out of ideas. And then you just knew what was going to happen. Long ball, touch it down, best push forward. Yep, ball out to the right, left side, bang, goal. 97th minute, last minute winner. Again, how many late goals have we conceded this season? Absolute joke. But, you know, maybe that was for the best, just to get Appleton out. I wanted him out as much as the next Charlton fan, but he was never the right man to lead us the, soon, the second he was appointed. Just don't know how we can keep getting this wrong. We're now searching for, I want to say, our eighth manager in the last three years. It's a joke. It's absolutely disgraceful how we go through so many managers and it doesn't exactly give you a good look either as a football club. And I know the owners have only recently just come in, but it's not a good look for them either. They have got two managerial appointments wrong in their time at the club. You've got to remember Dean Holden was their appointment when Thomas Sangard was selling the club. Holden was their man to, was their appointment. 
I don't think Holden was given the time personally, but and they admitted themselves in the online fan meeting, and they said themselves that they sort of reacted prematurely in that decision and they appointed Mark Rappon and got it so, so wrong. The man was just proved himself to be tactically inept. The results were there to begin with, as you probably would expect of any manager appointment. Of course, there's that new manager bounce. But it just so tactically inept, out of plan, uh, no no sense of plan B. And just uh, the, the, the one thing that, that I did dislike about Appleton the most was his lack of responsibility and taking accountability for his actions. It was It always had to be some sort of excuse. He would never blame himself. So one thing I hated. And then obviously his recent comments just did himself no favours there. I can kind of understand where he's coming from, to be honest. I mean, obviously some of the abuse he's received in terms of how he looks personally, I think is perhaps maybe a step too far. But, you know, I think he does have every right to defend himself. And to be honest, I think it is a somewhat respectable reaction. But of course, because he's so hated right now, it does himself no favours towards the fans. And obviously, as we said jokingly, you know, See you outside the West End, we'll say it to your face. You know, it's it's one of those. Can understand sort of where he's coming from, but the truth is he deserved to lose his job last night. That is the simple truth of it. But where the hell do we find ourselves now? We are four points above the relegation zone to lead to. That is the reality of it. And you look at our next few games coming up in February, we're fucked. We are absolutely Dead and buried. We've got Blackpool on Saturday. We've then got Derby twice. We've got Reading, who are, yes, out of form, but let's be honest, they're probably going to beat us. Portsmouth, Lincoln in that time. Might be wrong. I think we've got to play Cheltenham again. Like, I just have very little confidence in what's going on right now. I do think we've got some some decent players in this team. I think just look at the players we've got on paper. Alfie May, Freddie Ladapo recently coming in. Jules Dobson, Connor Coventry, Macaulay Gillespie and Romani Edmonds-Green recently coming in. Louis Watson, who should be starting. The fact that he ain't starting games is an absolute travesty. We have got decent players in this team. Yes, there are some that are probably punching above their weight in this team and Again, we need another reset in the summer, but it's just, I don't know how we end up in this situation. The ownership have fantastic transfer windows. We had a great summer. We're having probably the best January transfer window in the league right now. And it's all for nothing. When you keep getting the managerial appointments wrong, and I hate to say this because they've only just come in, but they have to be held to account. How do you get two managerial appointments wrong in one season? Not even that, half a season. Two managers gone before the end of January. That is disgraceful. Andy Scott has to be held to account. He's the one appointing these. Yes, you're bringing in these fantastic players. Well done. Great. It is for nothing if you have a tactically spineless manager. Look at the position we find ourselves in now. They said in their PowerPoints, oh yeah, the constant second of managers has left us with a squad that are down to different styles of play and it's just not a cohesive unit. And this is now continuing. Appleton has been allowed half of January, to build the players that he wants. He has changed the system to a back five. He has sold our most prolific attacking threat out wide in Blackett Taylor. George Dobson's contracts run down to the last five months and will probably be leaving, most definitely will be leaving. Scott Fraser's not going to hearts. All of this coming out on a Monday, of course. But it's just... I'm just frustrated because we've had a really good window. We've signed some very good players, I think. Well, maybe very good is a bit of a stretch. I don't know. Some some decent League One players that I think will improve us and will take us forward in the long term. That's the best way I can put it. But like I said, we've changed the system. We've sold our best attacking outlet out wide. Our, our captain is in the final five months of his contract. We are a mess. Who Who really in their right mind would take us now? And that's the thing. The next managerial appointment has to be absolutely spot on. There cannot be any mistakes with this. It has to be long term. There is no time to experiment because we are in a relegation battle. It's too much pressure on someone coming in on an interim basis. Of course, it come out today, Curtis Fleming, who has been here not even two weeks, by the way, is now our interim manager alongside Jason Pearce. 
until we search for a new manager. I don't know what's going on if we're searching for a manager, new manager. I ain't got a clue. No idea. Richard O'Donnell, our first team coach, has gone with Appleton. But yeah, Fleming and Pierce, they're going to be under the cosh massively. We've got to back them, of course. We have interim basis. They're under They're under incredible amounts of pressure, terrible situation for them to be in. And we've got to wish them the best and we've got to back them. And we have to back the players as simple as that. The players need as much support as anyone else. And that last night, I've seen some people criticise it. I think it was fantastic. And I think, to be honest, it was very eye-opening. And it told me everything I need to know. Michael Apple went straight down the tunnel. To be fair to him, I don't think anyone in that position would have done anything different. The amount of abuse he was receiving, he's probably wanted to just get out of there as quick as he can. The fact the players stayed there at the end and are clapping the fans, it shows the disconnect. They didn't want Appleton there. They did not want him. They did not want to play under him. It shows that disconnect. He lost the fan base. He lost the dressing room. And the players are, you know, they're playing out. Like, stick with us. We will. But you've also got to put the performances in. And I'm afraid some of those players haven't done that. Some of them, like I said, are punching above their weight. And some of them are fighting for their status at this club. Because, like I said, we need another hard reset in the summer once again. And I'm sick to death of us doing that. The promising signs are there. We can recruit decent players. The owners are willing to invest. But, like I said, it is all for nothing if you keep signing managers that are spineless and tactically inept and have no connection to the football club. I'm not going to go into details in terms of who I want as an ex-manager because, to be honest, I think it's for another video. If I'm mentioning it briefly, Nathan Jones is an early candidate without giving away my thoughts on that too much. He is a one that stands out. Michael Duff is available. Gary Rowett, you'd have to throw in that equation with the Charlton connection and obviously recently leaving Millwall. John Eustace is available. And then, of course, the standard, oh, Lee Bowyer, oh, Chris Powell, oh, let's, living in the past. Let's hold on to the good times that we once had. I don't want either of them back. I think if they come back now, I think it will tarnish any sort of reputation they had at this club. Bowyer seems to not want to come back. He's happy where he is at Montserrat. Fair enough. Fair play. Stay away from the club. You don't really want to come here right now. Chris Powell, same thing, and just living in the past. But I do agree with the fans. There has to be a Charlton connection. They have to understand this club and see it as a project. That's why Nathan Jones is an early standout. But I'm not going too much into that. Like I said, it's for another video. I don't ever remember it being this bad. I don't ever remember it getting to this stage. Like It's, it's just hitting me. We could be playing in the fourth division next season. It's eye-opening, isn't it? And it's unthinkable. I won't go on too much longer, but to end it, the owners have to get this right. They have to. I think they deserve to be called out over the ownership situation. Sacking two managers before the end of January, it's not a good look. That is the simple truth of it. I know they've only been here. Yes, they've done well in the transfer windows, but like I said, it's all for nothing. You have to get this managerial appointment correct and it has to be the right one. Our sole focus for this season now is staying in the division. Get as high as a finish as we can, get away from the relegation zone as much as we can and build next season. But right now we have a disconnected club. The fans are so disconnected with this football club. It's just kind of the same video I did last year when I said I was disillusioned and I took a break. I'm taking a similar break now because the motivation just isn't there. Searching for our eighth manager in three years. The players are deflated. Lacking so much confidence. We have to reignite that. All we can do as supporters, like I said, is just get behind the interim at the moment, Fleming and um, Pierce, back the players as much as we can and see where the road takes us. But we've got a very bumpy road coming up in February. It's a hell schedule. We need as many points as we can on the board. We need to strengthen in certain areas. We need foot, we need wing backs and we need another striker. And we need a manager that actually has a connection to this club and wants to lead us forward and see it as a project. This club does have potential. We just haven't realised it yet because we're just being mismanaged constantly by tactically inept managers and people on the board that keep making the wrong decisions and deserve to be called out, in my opinion. Andy Scott really needs to get this right or he needs to walk. But that's it. The Tyler Owners and Rants are back. I hope you enjoyed that. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's frustrating. I, I feel bad, you know, because it's just, me leaving without an explanation and me coming back with a video that I feel like I've uploaded constantly for the last few seasons. You must be bored to death watching me constantly saying the same old thing every single time. But 
I am back and I intend to stay for a little while at least and be a bit more consistent with this. So I hope you guys did enjoy this probably official return to YouTube. If you did, could you possibly leave a like, subscribe if you are new to the channel, turn on post notifications so you're notified of every time I upload a new video. Let me guys let me let you know let me know what you think in the uh, in the comments about this whole situation and um, everything that's going on. If you haven't seen my instant reaction, if you want to see a raw reaction to the Northampton game, check that out in the description. I'll see you in the next video, but Jesus Christ, this club is in probably the worst position it's been in in God knows how long, and it's just, it's never easy, is it? But I don't remember it being this bad, and things need to change, so take it easy, guys, stay safe, and I will see you all in the next video, whenever that is. It'll be sooner than uh, than, uh, <laughs> uh, than the break that it's been, um, or how long it's been since the last one, but yeah. It feels good to be back, but it doesn't feel good supporting this club right now, and if things don't change... It's unthinkable to even say, but we could be in lead to, and that is our reality. Thanks for watching again, guys. I appreciate all the support, and I'll see you soon. Take care.